mailbag time. I've got several items here. Let's find out what this is. All packaged. Clean protection on this one. Ah, right. It's um, op amps. So these are some UA seven one four HC op amps. Now let's pull one of these out, and it's original leg length, unused. So these are truly new old stock parts. Hard to find. Now I've got loads of these. I've got some refurbished ones which have been salvaged from equipment and had the legs replaced. And I do now have some new old stock ones as well. So we'll actually test these, shall we? So here we go. Here's my test jig. So I've got a potentiometer just here. This is adjusting the input voltage to the op amp. I've got input voltage here, which is the voltage from the pot. Here is the output voltage from the op amp. And we'll be able to see if we're getting about the right gain. So it's around 10 times gain. It's not actually exactly 10 times. It's it's off a bit because of the resistor values I've chosen. They're not actually perfect. So it's not actually 10 times, but it's close to it. I guess it gives us a ballpark idea if it's working or not. Now these parts do look like they're brand new. I've looked at all the leads and all the leads are perfectly formed like they would be from new. There's no signs of any rework or repairs or touching up. They are original. So I expect them all to work. So I'm only going to test one of them. If one works, they should all be good, I expect. And I've just chosen one at random. Let's pad this up. We've got a set of 15 volts. I've got a 10 milliamp current limit as a protection. Um, let's turn this on. So we go. Almost 1.1 volts coming in. 11.9 volts coming out. So almost 10 times, which is what I was expecting. If I drop it down a bit, there you go. And its lowest voltage is 5.12 volts as low as it will go. Which is, seems to be the common kind of trait around 5, you know, four and a half to 5 volts drop out in the bottom. And the maximum is 14.2, which is pretty common as well. So that's fine. So we'll drop a bit down, get a bit right. Here we go. So that looks like it's working absolutely fine. Got no problems. That's good. Excellent. New old stock. Very nice. Let's see what's in here. Don't forget to use links down below for anything I purchase, which I may get to put links down here for. Obviously, some things I can't put links for. Cool. So, this is um, Amtec NC559 Tacky Flux 30cc, it's got two tubes. Now I've actually had one of these for a long time. These only just arrived. You know, I got these from Rossman. Rossman, Lewis Rossman, those are all the MacBook repair stuff. He's got his online store and he sells his flux. Now there are a few other places sell this flux as well, and like New Northridge Fix is one of the ones which sells it. And I was actually gonna buy it from there. Then I looked at the prices and realised actually you're paying more from that particular store. Because they get these tubes and they actually put them into smaller tubes. And sell them as smaller tubes, right? You know, this is quite a large amount, most people don't need this much flux, so I can understand why they do that. But if you actually look at the price, one of those small tubes is the same cost as one of these big tubes. I think they give 10 cc's and these are 30 cc's. I think I've got that right, I hope you're not misquoting. And the price was basically the same, there wasn't much in it. So I've got these ones, and this is one I've had for ages. This one I've got. <laughs> Got in 2015, expired in 2016, and I'm still using it. And as you can see, I'm almost out, almost run out of it. It's getting close. So this is actually just a plunger which I had in the back from something else. It does not a great fit. I didn't have the proper plunger for it, but these ones are purchased come with the plungers. That's one of the options you can pay to get the plunger for them. So um, yeah, I've gone with that as well. So if it's taken me that long to use this one, then <laughs> I've probably got 10 years stock here. <laughs> But anyway, um, they have an expiry date on them, which means they, just, you know, they do gradually deteriorate as far as how well they work. But this one here, I've had for you know five years, six years, yeah, six years. I've had this one, and it's still going. Um, it's lasted me really well. But then I haven't used a lot of flux in that time. But I've been finding myself using flux more and more often. I'm always reaching for this one. 
it just works really well. You can get these like flux pens like this one, these cheap things. Um, they're not as nice. I just prefer these. Um, it's more cleaning up, but um, it works really well. It gives much nicer joints. What's in here? These are LED strips. That's right. So this is actually a strip of LED on this wire type material. I'm not quite sure what the voltage was. I've got a power supply right here. Let's hook it up and see what happens and figure out which way is which. Hmm. Right, hooked up to the power supply. I'm just trying this. Aha, there you go. 2.5 volts. Actually, maybe my current limit's kicking in. It could be, yes, my current limit is kicking in. Let's go up to, say, 50 milliamps. Well, I've got a bunch of them. I could sacrifice one and see what, what happens. Let's go to 100 milliamps. I think it's brighter. I'm not sure what this is rated for. So it's 65 milliamps right now. 100 milliamps. So 2.7 volts, 100 milliamps. That's pretty bright now. Getting better. Hmm, I might go and check the specs and find out what he's supposed to run on. Well, apparently this thing is 3 volts rated. So let's put this on the 3 volts. But it also said 50 milliamps, and I'm already drawing 100, so that's a little bit concerning. To 150 milliamps. Power it up again. It's doing 150 milliamps, 2.7 volts. Interesting. Well, let's keep going. 200 milliamps. 300 milliamps. That's getting pretty bright now. 400 milliamps, let's do 500 milliamps. That's 3 volts, here we go, that is really bright now. And that's doing 460, or well, 470 milliamps at 3 volts. So maybe this is 50 milliamps on the web page, maybe it's actually 500 milliamps. So that's actually quite a lot of current to be putting through a little LED strip like this. Let's put my normal lights back on again, so you can still see it. And you can, that's pretty intense. But I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually brighter at the ends and it is in the middle, which is interesting. It might just be an angle thing. Yeah, it's, it's brighter at the ends. That's curious. I'm just surprised by the amount of current that thing's actually chewing through. I mean, it's rated 3 volts. Mmm. <laughs> I might drop it down a little bit. It doesn't even turn on until 2.5 volts. So, 3 volts, I'd probably agree, is probably right. And 4 volts is really pushing it, I think, but yeah, 2.9. Maybe I find a use for this. I was thinking it might be a use in like decorative lighting on my bench or something, you know, maybe do something around here to create some interest in the back of the background of the display or something like that. So I've got these strips which are 30 centimeters long. I think I've got 10 of them. That's actually warm. So yeah, I don't want to drive these too hard because I burn out pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Oh, this is a element 14 package. Got some capacitors, uh, 2200 microfarad, 40 volts. These are like Datron power supply parts, which I've been using. Well, actually, they're 1000, I've been upgraded a little bit on a couple of things. These are tantalums, uh, 47 microfarad, 10 volts, and some 47 microfarad, 16 volt tantalums, and some chips. What are these? Opto couplers, HCPL 2601SD. I got some of these the other day, but now I've got some more. I've got loads of those now. I think the other ones were dip package. Yeah, I think the other was a dip. These are surface mount. Hmm. So, cell phone battery EB L1G6LLU. I was asked to replace a battery on someone's phone and I purchased this one. I don't know if this is a genuine new one or what. Well, it makes it suspicious when you don't come in like proper original packaging. I mean, hmm, no date code on it. Also makes it suspicious. But it could just be an aftermarket one, you know, with Samsung naming on it. Yes, always makes it suspicious with no date codes. But, you can get what you get.
that's the problem. It's for a Android phone, I can't remember which one it was now, doing the Galaxy Notes or something. Or something, I can't remember what it was now. Yeah. Thanks for Patreon supporters, help support the channel, help to buy things in the mailbag. And of course bits of test equipment to fix, which is one of the main reasons I do the channel. So this is a Element 14 package. I'm guessing it's probably nothing too exciting. Don't want to leave the bubble wrap for, but anyway. Capacitors, what are these ones? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Jump my kid to the tiles of the bloody code. Alright, what are they? Let's read the code of the bloody caps. 150 microfarad, 63 volt. Now the problem with these axial caps is they're a bit harder to get. These ones are 85 degree rated. I would prefer to use 105s, just because it gives them a longer life. Sometimes you can't really be choosy, you just have to you know, get what you can get for the cost. I mean, you, you could spend two or three times as much maybe and get the right one. I mean, this will be fine for, you know, ten years at least. So, it doesn't really matter that much. This is from eBay. So, I bought off eBay. DCA 75. This is a Peak Electronics device. Fortunately, I'm not sponsored by Peak. It would be nice if I was sponsored by Peak and get some of their gear. It almost happened a few years ago, but never actually ended up happening. So, this is a transistor tester. This is a bit more advanced than one I've already got. Software in there as well. Um, right, get that out of the packaging. So, I already have the DCA55, which I've had for quite a while now, actually. I've had it for several years. Um, yeah. Now I was using this recently to work on my Datron and I was trying to diagnose from JFETs to test those to see if they were taken or not. But this can only identify the gates of a JFET. That was it. Couldn't tell me anything about them. Whereas this device is supposed to do a little bit more than that. So I've got a transistor sitting here right now. It's actually hook it up and we'll do a little test with it. Peak Electronics, if you ever see my videos, please get in touch. I'm interested in sponsorship. So look. Hmm. He thinks it's okay. Now that is interesting, because I thought this was a bad part. That is very curious. So all the specs in there for it. So, the interesting thing about this is that this is a part I took out of the Datron calibrator because it wasn't working properly. 2N3904. So this was in the reference of the Datron calibrator and this wasn't fully turning on. Curious. So here's a brand new part. Let's see if this looks much different to the other one. So that's said a HFA 180 and had like 5 milliamps draw and a 0.86 I think it was volt turn on voltage. Let's have a look. Hundred and eighty six HFE, that's the same, pretty much. Five milliamps. Current five milliamps, yep, so point seven six, that's slightly lower. Saturation voltage is point zero four nine at five milliamps. Maybe I'll check that one. And one milliamp on that one, leakage zero. So let's look at this 0 0.049 voltage. See if that was any different. Just out of curiosity, because I mean this part I replaced it because it was playing up. It could be an intermittent fault. Maybe I've desoldered it and now it's like reconnected it inside or something. I don't know. It could be a mechanical failure rather than a semiconductor layer failure or something. So let's retest this one. This is the one which I took out. 181, 0.826, so it's slightly higher as I said, 0.13, so here we go, it's different voltage as well, so it is a higher saturation voltage, yeah, okay, so on this tester it actually looks like that part's okay, but I know it's not okay, I think it may be just because uh, it's partially working but not fully, you just couldn't handle the current, so maybe the current on this isn't high enough, interesting. 
that's not quite as I was expecting for that particular part. Now I do have another part which I believe is blind. Let's test this one. This can do a lot more devices than my DCA55 can. No component detected. Well, there's a part there. This one's dead. <laughs> that component is dead. I know that. This one is dead. So that's not surprising you couldn't find it. Let's try one of these things. It's a triac, by the way. No component detected. Oh. I do know that's dead, though. Let's try another one. No, nah, that's completely dead as well. So these are obviously completely open circuit and just basically completely fried. Yeah, this has got some connectivity. You can read it. You can plug into the computer, use a bit of software on it. And not on my Mac, unfortunately. I have to do it on a PC, which I don't actually have. It allows you to do graphing and actual... I think you can do, like, um, curves. Curve tracing. Curve tracing, that's what I'm looking for. Apparently you can do that. It's not something I've actually got it for. I just got it because I wanted it to be able to do JFETs and a few more devices which my current tester can't do. You know what? I'm an idiot. 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 That part I grabbed before was a 2N3906, not a 2N3904. This is a 3904. HFE's triple two, slightly higher. 0.765 turn on voltage, 0 0.037, so it's, it definitely is different to the other device. Yeah, but NPN, not PNP. Should notice that, shouldn't I? Because I've got two N three nine zero fours and two N three nine sixes in the same drawer, and I picked up the wrong one. It's a notice in the end. I'm gonna go and put it back in the arsenal, right? So yes, a bit of a difference there in a few things. HFE is different, and that voltage is different, so. Yeah, this one doesn't quite match, but then this part is probably 30 years, yes, 30 years older. So one of the other things I've got sitting over here is this IC, which is actually a triac driver thing, so it's like an optocoupler with a triac output, and it's recognised that as a triac on one side, which is good. No details apart from that. And if I switch it to the other side... It's found the LED. 1.139 volts, forward voltage at 5 milliamps. So this part is actually okay. So this was part of a repair I'd done some time ago, which required the triax and these little driver ICs to be replaced. And as I didn't know which part was bad or whether this may have been affected, I replaced this and the main triac as a pair, basically, because this drives a main triac. I thought this was potentially bad. Looks like it's fine. Could have saved myself a few dollars. Never mind. Give us a thumb up if you like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, click the bell icon to get notifications about future videos so you don't miss out on my future stuff. Thank you much to my Patreon supporters who help support the channel and help me to buy stuff from our bag and little curiosities for you guys to see. Without their support it would make it a lot harder for me to buy these items. I spend a lot more money on my channel and buying things for content, I spend a lot more money on that than I actually earn from the channel. So it's actually cost me money to run the channel. So, so all that support I get from my Patreons and my YouTube members as well. Much appreciated. If you want to support the channel without financially supporting me, just give me a thumbs up. That helps the channel. Comment down below. That helps the channel as well. All these kinds of little things. Sharing the video to your friends or like for social media aspects as well. Not necessarily this video, but any of my videos. Share it in my videos. It helps to boost it a little bit and more people see it. And that helps me. It helps YouTube to recognise that people are watching my my videos and maybe it will boost me a bit more and that supports the channel. So you don't have to give me support financially. It could just be give me a thumbs up. It could be adding a comment. It could be sharing a video. It doesn't really require any financial input in that way. But financial stuff certainly helps. So thank you much for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.